Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Brothers in the Episcopacy, especially you, Bishop Brandt, Shepherd of the Church of Greensburg, dear abbots and primates, especially you, Most Reverend Abbot Primate Father Wolf, Arch Abbot Nowicki, dear brothers and sisters in consecrated Benedictine life, Lady Abbess, brother priests, members of the parish, seminary, and college of St. Vincent Arch Abbey, distinguished guests, your Royal Highness, Prince Ludwig of Bavaria, members of the ecumenical and interreligious communities, friends in Jesus Christ. It is a great pleasure to join with you today in celebrating the 200th anniversary of the birth of Archabbot Boniface Wimmer, the founding Archabbot of St. Vincent Abbey, and thus the founder of the first Benedictine monastery and school in the United States. Forward, always forward, everywhere forward, man's adversity is God's opportunity. These words of Archabbot Boniface Wimmer capture and express the missionary impulse and pastoral zeal that led him to be the founding Archabbot of this great and impressive Archabbey of St. Vincent here in Latrobe. How similar his words are to the Great Commission, the words of the Lord Jesus, which we heard only moments ago from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. St. Jerome, commenting on this passage of the Great Commission, states, What a marvelous sequence this is. Jesus commanded the apostles first to teach all nations and then to baptize them in the sacrament of faith. And then, after faith and baptism, to teach them to observe all he had commanded. Lest we think these commandments of little consequence or few in number, St. Jerome goes on to say, Jesus added, all that I have commanded you, so that those who were to believe and be baptized in the Trinity would observe everything they had been taught. The pastoral imperative of Jesus, go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, has propelled countless men and women throughout the centuries to stir forth from their own comfort and to plunge into adversity to discover anew the fidelity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We see this same direction in the life of Boniface, who had a momentum for the things of God. Boniface was ordained to the diocesan priesthood in his native Bavaria in 1831. Only two years later, in 1833, he discerned a vocation to Benedictine monastic life and professed his solemn vows at St. Michael Abbey in Metten, Bavaria. Less than ten years later, in 1842, he began to petition the abbot to permit him to be a missionary in America. This having been granted, Boniface Wimmer came to America, and in 1846 he founded St. Vincent Arch Abbey. From diocesan priest to monk to missionary, all in the space of little more than a decade, 
his resolve to leave all things to follow Christ was not based solely in his good intentions or fervent desires. His dedication arose from love. The teaching of the Second Vatican Council in Perfecte Caritatis, the decree on the renewal of religious life, states, under the impulse of love which the Holy Spirit pours into their hearts, religious live more and more for Christ and for his body, the church. The more fervently, therefore, they join themselves to Christ by this gift of their whole life, the fuller does the church's life become and the more vigorous and fruitful the apostolate. End of quote. The impulse of love prepared Boniface Wimmerd to dedicate his many gifts to God. Our actions and efforts find their place only when they emerge from the love of God. The mission of Boniface was to search for God amongst those who were in adversity. As he said, man's adversity is God's opportunity. We see in his life a sacred succession of listening and response. Boniface was keenly aware of the instability and frailty of our own human resources. He sought out the reliability of the grace of God and the life of virtue. Providentially, the anniversary year celebrating the birth of Boniface began in the year of St. Paul, the great missionary apostle, and it continues in the year of the, in the, year of the priest. St. Boniface, both as priest and missionary, witnesses to us about the fruitfulness that is possible when, in docility, we offer our humble actions to the power of the Holy Spirit. Boniface was summoned by God to a sustained intensification of the gift of self. His response was a sequence of fidelity to the call of Christ. He was faithful to the rule of St. Benedict. He heard with clarity the very first words of the rule. Listen carefully, my child. Boniface did listen carefully, and he heard the summons of the Holy Spirit to, with, to be with those who cried out in their need. And now, today, as we gather in this beautiful basilica, we are surrounded by the effects of Boniface's listening and responding to the Word of God. We see St. Vincent's College, St. Vincent's Seminary, the Benedictine Community, and St. Vincent Basilica Parish, which together advance the many apostolates which spring forth from the community founded by Boniface. Consider the rich inheritance dispensed among countless believers who have prayed in this beautiful basilica, discovered and nurtured their own vocation on these grounds, been nourished by the sacraments, pursued holiness through the retreats, studied and meditated on the mystery of Christ, have been drawn to the beauty of the church through the work of the artisans. All of this arose from faithfulness, faithfulness in difficult times. That which others run from and attempt to escape, namely adversity, Boniface was called, was called to it. He came to America during a time of great adversity. In particular, he was responding to the plight 
of German immigrants. By most estimates, already in 1776, over one-third of Pennsylvania's population consisted of German immigrants, and they continued their journey to America for decades thereafter. They fled unstable political situations and economic hardship. They came seeking religious freedom after the Napoleonic Wars. Their journey was difficult and filled with suffering and pain. Many of their friends and relatives had died during the voyage. They then met prejudice and discrimination as they sought to settle and raise their families. There was adversity at every turn. These pains do not belong merely to the past. Pope Benedict XVI, in his most recent encyclical letter, Caritas in Veritate, Charity in Truth, draws our attention to the burdens and sufferings associated with, in his words, large-scale migration of peoples, often provoked by some particular circumstance and then given insufficient attention." End of quote. The Holy Father goes on to emphasize the social, economic, political, cultural, and religious problems raised by the phenomenon of migration, which require, as he said, bold, forward-looking policies. How similar the words of Pope Benedict are to those of Boniface, forward, always forward, everywhere forward. The words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, drew Boniface to this place. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. As the letter to the Romans proclaimed only moments ago, and as it makes clear, these words, but they will not ask his help unless they believe in him, and they will not believe in him unless they have heard of him, and they will not hear of him unless they get a preacher, and they will never have a preacher unless one is sent. One was sent. He was sent to preach so that others might hear of Jesus and hearing that they might believe. The Holy Spirit took hold of Boniface and led him in an adventurous search that brought him to his neighbor, to the poor, and to the oppressed. As his own namesake and patron, St. Boniface, was sent as a missionary to Germany in the 8th century, so Boniface Wimmer served the German people in America in the 19th century. Such is the faithfulness and consistency of the love of God. And so Boniface led 18 novices to Pennsylvania so that together they might evangelize, serve, and teach the German immigrants as they bore witness to the gospel values of religious consecrated life. As they came to this spot, the only structures they had were a small schoolhouse, a barn, a log cabin, and a small brick church. But they were accompanied by the spirit of their father, St. Benedict. The Benedictine rule, the fellowship of the community, their commitment to the continual pondering of the word of God, study of the divine mysteries, devotion to the sacraments, and perseverance in hard work. This was the foundation of 41 years of service and dedication to the Church in America on the part of this son of St. Benedict. The rule of Benedict guided him so that his energies were not dispersed but totally devoted to the Church. The Eucharist 
was his constant source of sustenance, as it must be ours, dear friends. As Pope Benedict XVI teaches in Sacramentum Caritatis, there is nothing authentically human. Our thoughts and affections are words and deeds that does not find in the sacrament of the Eucharist the form it needs to be lived to the full. Words of Pope Benedict. With the strength provided by the Eucharist, the fears, demands, expectations, temptations we encounter in our daily life can be met with readiness, surrender, trust, sacrifice, forgiveness, renunciation, and endurance. The mixture of docility and resolve that so filled the hearts of these early Benedictines show us that every obstacle is best handled when met with courage and utter dependence upon God. The gift of administration is clearly evident in the work of Boniface. By the time of his death, on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, December 8, 1887, there were in the United States, as a direct result of his zeal, five Benedictine abbeys, two priories, 152 parishes, missions, and stations, together with many Benedictine schools. Underlying all his gifts and all his achievements was the impulse of divine love working within the unity of the Church. God has chosen to challenge the Arch Abbey of St. Vincent, founded on the impulse of divine love to be, through your fidelity, a sign of that love for generations to come. The initial impulse of love led Boniface to embrace the evangelical councils in that great rule of St. Benedict. Today, all around us, we praise the spiritual fruitfulness of that love. And that love calls us forward with the help of Mary, mother of the incarnate word and mother of his church, to reach out to those in adversity and to proclaim the message of God's kingdom. And today, as we celebrate the 200th year of the birth of Boniface Wimmer, arch abbot and founder, we give thanks to the most blessed Trinity for his fidelity and that of his fellow monks. With humble and lasting gratitude, we proclaim in the words of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, their voice has gone out through all the earth and their message to the ends of the world. Amen.